I've had numerous Android head units before, but I've never found one that I've actually liked. That is, until now. Enon asked me to review this 10 inch Android head unit and I was a little hesitant because I had so many other companies ask me to do a review on their Android head units that were well, far more expensive than this one. And once I received them, I had to tell you that I couldn't recommend the product and I had to tell them that. It just wasn't something that met my standards or standards that I felt comfortable with someone else buying it. So with this being significantly less money, I was very hesitant that it could even be a viable option, but nonetheless, I decided to review it. And this is what I found out. It does have Android 10 and has all your basic standard connections on the back. It has quite a few wiring harnesses for the connections that aren't built specifically into it, such as your microphone, uh, your amplifier RCAs, which there's five of those for front, rear, and subwoofer, and of course, your main wiring harness. The unit itself is very easy to install. It just uses your basic connectors, so if you've connected any stereo before, you could easily connect this. And since I had a little bit of reservation of how well it would work, at first I wanted to hook this up with my bench power supply to see it in action. Enon claims not only to have Android 10.0 on it, but also claims to have wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Nonetheless, this was a little bit surprising because I've had Android head units where the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto that are claimed to be on there, they just didn't work. In fact, most Android head units that I've received half of the things they claimed didn't work. I went ahead and hooked up the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto to this, and both of them worked flawlessly. I disconnected, reconnected, disconnected, and reconnected, and it kept working every single time. The interesting thing about an Android head unit uh, connecting with Apple CarPlay or connecting with Android Auto is it connects a little bit different than the Linux-based systems, in the essence that this does use an app. And this one is called T-Link. The great thing about this app is you can go inside and set it to auto connect to your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto device when you get into the car. Sure enough, this worked flawlessly. As soon as the Bluetooth connected, it pulled up the Android Auto or the Apple CarPlay. And honestly, that was really impressive because I didn't expect it. <laughs> but not everyone wants to use Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I mean, you do get this Android head unit for other things that Android can do, such as things like Netflix. The problem with Netflix is that a lot of Android head units are not able to utilize Netflix out of the box. I don't know how Enon did it, but Netflix was pre-installed and working. It did offer to have me update Netflix, but I chose not to do this because I was afraid that once I did, Netflix wouldn't work anymore. And so I love Netflix just the way it came. But I did try all my other streaming services as well, such as Plex, Amazon Prime Video, and Vudu, and all of them work without a hitch. I've had no problems being able to stream any video that I want from this unit. Now you might be wondering, how am I actually streaming if I don't have internet or the unit itself doesn't have internet? This does have Wi-Fi enabled, but you do have to connect to a Wi-Fi internet source. Now a lot of Android head units use a SIM card, so you can use it almost like a phone. This one doesn't have that option. So instead of using a SIM card, what you're going to do is you're actually going to use your phone as a wireless hotspot, or you can actually get a 4G dongle as well. But if using it as a hotspot like I do, you just connect to the wireless internet. Once you do that, you can use this as a connected Android tablet. You can watch videos, you can listen to music, you can play games on it. I mean, it's really pretty amazing. In fact, if you wanted to connect a Bluetooth controller to it and play video games on it, you absolutely could do that. It really does make this unit, well, just a fun unit to have, especially on like long road trips where you might have to stop for a while. Now, I know what you're thinking is that most of the time you're gonna need to use a, a parking brake to connect to your video or have your video sources play. Well, that's not the case with this Android head unit. You can watch videos anytime. I mean, in fact, you could even watch it while you're driving down the road. Although I don't recommend that. And honestly, it's illegal to do. It's really just not smart. So don't do that. Another thing that a lot of people want to know about this Android head unit or Android head units in general is what are their other features and how do they sound? The sound quality on this one wasn't the greatest when I first installed it in my car. In fact, I didn't really like the sound at all. It was way too bass and mid-bass heavy for my taste. Luckily, they do include a 48 band EQ that is really good. And once I made a few adjustments to the EQ, I had this sounding perfect and just the way I want it. And I haven't had to touch it ever since. Now, the main reason for this is Enon offers a much better EQ than I've used on other Android head units. 
You can actually change the cue of the frequency, which allows you to determine the width of the frequencies that you're actually adjusting. And then while you're doing that as well, you have a ton of bands, a lot more bands than I've had on other EQs in the past. In fact, this is a 48 band EQ, and that's just insane, you know, in, in a good way. Now, Android has always been known for customization, and this head unit is no different. In fact, not only can you change what the display looks like, but also how it functions for you. In fact, there's four already pre-installed themes that you can easily change between, and there's actually hundreds more that are available for purchase and download. Each one of these has a unique design and even some unique functions to it. That means that this is completely usable and not just for aesthetics. For example, some of these will allow you to tune the radio station fairly easily or even show you how fast you're going. One of them will actually show the car driving down the road as you're driving. It's a really unique feature that allows you to just adjust this unit to fit your specific needs and, well, your tastes. Some of the other features that I haven't noted is it does allow you to connect to an OBD2 sensor. It already has Torque Pro installed, which allows you to connect your head unit to the OBD2 sensor via Bluetooth. Now this will allow you to regulate your fuel efficiency, your RPMs, your speed limit. Really the possibilities are pretty endless in what you can do. It also allows it to scan your vehicle to tell you if there's any check engine lights and what those check engine lights are actually for. Now in order to use that Bluetooth OBD2 scanner, you're gonna need to buy one, but they are relatively cheap. And although this is a really cool feature, my favorite feature is actually the only physical feature that I can think of. And that's the adjustability of this unit. Whenever you have a, one of these big tablet-like screens, which just one's 10 inches, the problem is going to be glare and vent placement. Now, Enon has really tried to fix this by allowing you to move the screen easily up and down by just grabbing a few clips on the back and just letting you set your height. Now you can further adjust screen by just grabbing it and angling to the left or right, or even to the top or bottom. And this allows you to place it in a way that negates glare and is out of the way of the vents. This has made things so much better when I'm driving down the road. I can just tilt the screen towards me to cut out the glare, and it helps me navigate the system much, much, much easier. Of course, I don't really need to navigate the system that much because I can just use my voice for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And these both work flawlessly with my voice. Whether I was telling it to turn on and off the music, call someone, text someone, or even get directions, I never had an issue with it at all. In fact, I haven't had any issues with this unit at all. Now, voice control is not for you. You can just use your steering wheel controls that you already have in your car. This does support that. Now, this really has become my favorite head unit that I've used to date. So much so that it's already replaced a much, much more expensive head unit and is going to become my staple in my daily driver. In fact, one of the other features that I found especially useful was the backup camera. With mine installed, as soon as I put it in reverse, it pops up on the screen. Now, one of the main issues I've had with some of the other units in the past is they mute or lower the volume when backing up. This unit allows me to decide the volume level when I put it in reverse, which is very helpful, especially when I'm on the phone. If a rear camera is not enough, it does support a front camera as well. These are just a few levels of customization that I really appreciate in my daily driver. And that's really where I see this as someone's daily driver, a vehicle where you want to drive back and forth, you want to sound good, and also want to have features to be able to just take a break in your car and watch a show. Or maybe your wife wants to go shopping on Sunday and you just want to watch the football game or just watch a little bit of Netflix. With a unit like this, that becomes a complete possibility. So you've probably been wondering if there's anything that I don't like about this unit. And in this price range, there's really not much that I don't like. However, I will say this, the unit itself isn't necessarily the fastest. Now it does everything that I need at the speed at which I need it to. However, I do wonder if you put a lot of running apps on it, whether or not it will continue to be as quick as it is now. And the only other thing that might be an issue for some people is what I mentioned earlier. It, it doesn't have any type of SIM card slot. So you're gonna have to use your phone as a wireless hotspot or that 4G dongle. Assuming, of course, you wanna use any of the online features of the Android portion on it. Now, if you would like to save a little bit of money, I do have a coupon code down below. Just go ahead and use that link. Now, if you like this review and enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell. Don't forget to like the video. This is Toyd's DIY Audio. 
and I'm out. <laughs>